Hello everyone and welcome back to another embroidery video and this time I'm working on this super cool Faro that you can see right here and we've got loads of different techniques but I've tried to keep it relatively simple for some of the beginners but it's an advanced woven picot, some bullion stitch, French knot and just a simple straight stitch to finish that off. So I hope you enjoyed the video and let me know how you get on in the comments. So the first thing that I've done is actually trace twice my design out. So I've traced first of all my pharaoh with his face and then I've actually traced around that pharaoh's face to achieve this shape that you can see right here. And this is the really important shape because that's actually what I'm going to transfer over. But I've got obviously this for reference uh, so that I can see exactly how I want the facial structure to go and all of that kind of good stuff. So I've also got my water soluble pen. You know me already, I'm a cheapskate. I got these off of eBay, three quid for about six or something, really good deal. And they work really well. So I'm gonna take that shape that I just showed you and I'm gonna draw around it like so. You don't have to be too, too precious with this, but you know, obviously you need to get an accurate-ish type of size. Now these water soluble fen pens blah, are not amazingly accurate in terms of they do bleed a little bit, but for this it doesn't really matter. So you've got your drawn around shape right now, as you can see here. So what I'm gonna do is get my pins and I'm going to start pinning around this shape. Now I always leave a seam allowance of roughly around about three to four millimeters above these lines. I'm gonna put lots of pins up the top of the head because I want loads and loads of strands coming down so that I can form a really nice tight weave. And just two here at the side of the face so I can get a really nice jaw structure. And then to here you'll notice that they are in a different direction so that I've got the inside area sort of like the, the concave part of the face this is really important actually because otherwise your weave can go sort of sideways or something like that it's, it doesn't look very nice so definitely pin your pins here so I'm going to start with a brown toned thread. This is a full skein, so no separation in the floss. And I'm going to come up underneath that first pin, underneath this one that you can see here, and then around all of the top of the pins. And then I'm going to follow that procedure on the other side, underneath this one, over the top here, and underneath that bottom bit right there that you can see and then back down through the fabric. So you can see that right now, my thread should be outlining the shape that I've created with roughly around about what, four millimeters seam allowance all the way around. So I'm gonna come up and with my thread, sorry, and go near the second inside pin right here. And I'm actually gonna put a buttonhole stitch or just like a little loop just to hold that in place so it's nice and tight and then again I'm going to go underneath all these pins and I'm going to stop at that second to last pin right here and again I am going to create a nice little buttonhole stitch and take it back down the bottom here where the chin is. I'm going to start again, repeat the process for the third pin in Again, buttonhole stitch it. Now the reason why I like to add a buttonhole stitch is just because sometimes when you actually take the pins out, you can get a real looseness where there's no sort of form of tension or attachment in the, the weave because obviously this is not the normal way to do a woven pico. So you do need those points. I would always add those anchoring points in there. This is not sort of like a tried and tested science. I'm kind of making this up as I go along. I've done it quite a few times and this is the way that I found works the best. So I'm gonna do it again one more time for the inner three pins. Again, I've got a little buttonhole stitch. Come down. And then my final one is at the middle here and I will put a buttonhole stitch again here I hope that you can all understand my accent. Someone said something about my accent and they couldn't really understand it. I'm really sorry, I'm from South East London. I do tend to drop my T's and over pronounce lots of different letters. So I'm really sorry about that. <laughs> okay, so what I've done is I've started to create the weave. So it's under, over, under, over, under, over, right? Like we always do if you go and watch any of these videos. So you're gonna go under, 
over the top so here you can see me coming over the top of this weave and the weave begins between the first three pins okay and then what you do is as you go along you're going to space that weave out now I've actually not speeded this up you're more than welcome obviously to go and speed this up if this is kind of boring and you know what you're doing but there's a lot of beginners here that don't really understand the weaving process so the objective is to fill between these pins up and then once you've filled between the first three pins you're then going to fill between as you can see here the next set of pins try and keep it as tight as possible here you can see me really pulling I'm not going to add a buttonhole stitch here for this specific weave simply because it's fairly straight so I'm not going to need to do that sometimes I will add one but in this instance if I was going to do something like this that's fairly straight I'm not going to add any more buttonhole stitches I'm just going to start weaving and this is the really important thing about using that full strand if you split this weave if you split sorry this stranded cotton you're going to end up with something that's way too thin and you're not going to fill up your space a in the desired time but also b it's just not going to look as nice so really do use like nice thick thread you can even use double i've used double if you check out my instagram the ursula video that was a great use of double woven pico like with a double strand so when you run out of thread all i'm going to do put a little quick knot in there like you can see here i usually use a reef knot um, and i just cut off the excess on either side and then i carry on when I begin the weave, I obviously always use a super long strength, uh, strand as long as I possibly can without it actually, you know, kind of getting too many knots. So I'm going to go ahead and let you watch this and you can see all of the weave and how it happens. Obviously, as I go further down and further down, you'll see that the pins become a little bit of a problem. So if I need to, I'll adjust them, move them further down, or I'll just take them out completely once I've got that positioning in. Once we've got so much of a weave, it really doesn't matter anymore and you can just take the pins out anyway. So anyway, I'm gonna shut up now because I talk too much and uh, I'm gonna finish up the face. So once I've filled up most of this design, and you can see towards the bottom of the chin here, you have got a really, really tight situation where it's gonna become nearly impossible, in fact, quite impossible, to even continue the weave with all of those strands right there because they're so densely packed. So what you're gonna to need to do is to start picking out the most usable uh, strands and then forget the others so you can see right here I've just gone through those three and taken it all the way through and then I'm gonna go back through those only three and I'm dropping the rest of those other ones out and I'm gonna continue to do that I might even drop another one of those if I can no longer use them um, when I get further down at the face So now I've finished the weave and this is probably the best bit. This is my favourite bit, taking out the pins because I get to see like, okay, how the weave, the weave has, you know, like how solidly packed it is and all that kind of stuff. Yes, it's a bit of a bummer when you find out that your weave is not great, but most of the time, particularly if you follow these rules that I've given you, you're going to get a great weave and the satisfaction that you get from just lifting that up and just having a good look at it like I am now is like, oh my God, yes. I know I'm a really weird person, like who else gets excited about this kind of stuff? Okay, so the face is done, completely happy now. So what I'm gonna do is go ahead and take some felt. I'm using like a really nice thick felt here. It's like a mix between a wool and a polyester, like a half and half or maybe 40, 60, uh, three millimeters. And I am just drawing around this shape. Now, the reason why I'm not using the original tracing is because without a doubt, this is gonna be a completely different shape, reasonably speaking. So once I've got that shape, I'm going to cut it out using a seam allowance and just cut in the chin like so. Place it underneath and see where we're at. And you can see obviously that still needs quite a bit of trimming down. So I'm actually going to draw it in again using the guideline of the drawing that I have around the back just draw it in 
and then I will chop that out as well because really and truly I need to make sure that this is maybe around about two millimeters or maybe three smaller than even the original drawing on the inside because this uh, shape the face shape actually has to fit on top here so it's really really important so once I've done that and I'm really happy with the shape which I am I'm going to come in with a fine needle I think here I'm using a little sharps needle you can also use a beading needle in fact that's what I usually use just some normal cotton thread any thread that's thin enough to go through the eye of the needle double strands and you can see I put a tacking stitch there to hold it down and then I'm actually doing an overcast stitch around all of the outside to hold this shape in place and you'll notice that my water soluble pen line is obviously on the outside of that and the felt's not creeping over it it's really important lots and lots of stitches i can't stress this enough this is one of the it's one of my pet hates if you ever come on a workshop with me you'll know like i get you to over over stitch this there's there can't be too much stitching in this the only time that you can have too much stitching is when it gets too stiff so lots and lots of stitches don't be lazy on this point i flipped the brown shape over now and using a brown cotton floss or you can even use the embroidery floss that this was just take one strand out I'm going to stitch all the way around so it almost looks like an acorn really at this point I've then got a black thread double stranded and I've come up where the beginning of that hat would be I'm kind of looking at my tracing now and just seeing because obviously this is quite a dark color it's really difficult to get any kind of transfer lines over on it unless you've got like a white pen which I don't really want to do on this so I'm just going to kind of develop it as I want and draw it out freehand as opposed to really sticking to my original tracing so I've got this black line here that will become the outline for my whole headdress so I've gone across the top couched one stitch in place just to hold it down and then I'm going to come up and create the stripes with just some straight stitches that you can see here really really simple um, you don't have to you know it doesn't really matter you just want to create fairly even stitches so that you know where you're going to start adding your different colored flosses so once I've done that I've actually got a medium sized needle it's very very sharp reasonably fine I would say it's an embroidery needle um, you could probably use a Chanel needle as well and I've taken a full skein of yellow floss and I'm just filling in the area where the first stripe guideline is I've actually gone over the black lines pretty much it really doesn't matter in fact if anything it's probably best to hide those black lines they don't look as nice as they could um, so yeah I'm just gonna fill in alternate stripes in yellow And then I'm going to do the same thing for the blue. And now again, this is a whole strand of floss. I haven't had any separation on here simply because I really want to block out that brown. And I think it's going to be quite difficult to do um, if I was using a finer amount of strands. And also, I just want to get this done in one straight stitch because coming up and through the felt is quite difficult. Um, and it can look quite... It doesn't look as nice as it could if you start sort of doing long and short stitch or something like that so I found a straight stitch just works best for this so I'm gonna go ahead and fill in those sides there Okay, so next I'm actually going to draw on the rest of the headdress. I'm going to do this roughly. I don't really feel like I need the tracing anymore because it's a very simple shape. If you want to use your tracing, you're more than welcome. And then I'm going to add the stripes in on that shape, just like so. And I'm going to continue my straight stitch, obviously in a horizontal direction so that I can get the sense of, you know, that kind of direction that's going to really help. And obviously it's going to take a lot less time than if you were doing it vertically, which is going to take forever. And I'm going to do both sides and 
here I'm going to add some detail across the top of the head. So you can see me one strand straight across the head and then to hold that in place I'm going to come up through the middle and actually hold it in place with a French knot. So really, really nice, I think around about four or five thick wraps and then just pull it down. And again work on the other side and fill up this area alternatively. Um, yellow and blue until you've completely covered your whole headdress. So at this point I'm trying to do the ears, well I'm not trying, I'm going to do them. <laughs> uh, so I've come up with my same brown toned floss on a needle, I think this is a chenille needle, it's one with a nice big eye. And I've come up and gone down and then I've come up near the original spot like you can see here I personally don't keep my needle in the fabric for bullion knots if you want to you do you this is just how I find it works best for me so I'm going to wrap around the needle in a clockwise direction now this bullion stitch is going to be big it needs to be as long as you want the ear plus maybe around about four or five millimeters extra so that you can create that looping idea for the top of the ear and then obviously the earlobe and once I've done that I'm just going to move the wraps down keep them nice and tight this is always a little bit of a struggle to get the wraps over because of how we're doing it we're doing it in a very different way so just jingle them like jingle them, rub them around <laughs> Gosh, it sounds really bad um, just sort of move them down the needle but try and keep them evenly wrapped that's really the key because sometimes if you're not keeping that wrap even you can end up with like a bagginess at either end or maybe even sometimes in the middle so once you're happy with those wraps just pull them through make sure that your bottom thread is not all kind of uh, twisted and stuff like that like that can happen when you're twisting um, threads and then bring the thread back down through the fabric and you can see that you've got a really nice little curvature um, bullion stitch so I'm gonna couch this in place now I'm gonna keep that top that top nice roundness to the ear and then I'm going to create an earlobe by pulling that back and down like so now that should be kept in place really I'm just going to color in the rest of the ear with some straight stitch until I've filled up all of the areas where the headdress is showing and once I've done that I'm just gonna add like a little stud here with um, by using a yellow toned floss same as I've used in the headdress and just giving him some little studs in his ears so you can see I've done that with both ears and now I'm gonna go ahead and draw out some features on my face now I'm doing this in a quite a brave way I'm just using a fine liner pen because I know exactly what I want and this tone floss doesn't really show any kind of mistakes but if you're not comfortable doing that please do go and refer to the Huey video where I done Huey from the boondocks to have a look at how I've traced over that face using a tracing now that I've got the basic features of my Faro on, I'm going to go in with a embroidery black floss. And this is actually a double strand, so again with a knot at the end. And I'm just going to outline all of the features. Now you'll notice that I've actually left the mouth alone once I finish this. I've left the mouth completely alone. Um, I'm doing the eyebrows right now, leaving the mouth so that I can go ahead and add some colour on that because the mouth is a, like a tricky part really. So once I've done that and I'm happy with the outline, I'm going to add some white floss just to, you know, create a sense of depth in the eye. Just some straight stitches. I'm using a single strand of white floss with a knot at the end, so it's like a double strand. And then I'm gonna come back in with my black and I am going to create like a pupil. If you notice on pharaohs and mummies, like the depictions of paintings and stuff, they don't actually have like irises or anything like that. So I'm just gonna go ahead and create a whole black sort of looking eye with just like a white dot so I'm just going to leave a white area so that we've got like that highlight inside of the eye and as you can see when it's finished I'm pretty happy with that then I'm going to take a lighter toned brown this is like a really nude type of brown almost like a coffee color and I'm just going to go in and I think this is two strands here and I'm going to fill in the lips 
not going to be too precious about it because I am going to black outline them but I'm just going to make sure that I keep inside the black lines that I drew and once I've done that I'm gonna go ahead and add my final black outlines that you can see here I'm actually just using straight stitches and couching these straight stitches into place so I had one single straight stitch that went alongside the mouth and then I had a single couching stitch at the bottom to create like that curve at the bottom and then here at the top lip it will actually be three couching stitches along the cupid bow so one at the downturn of the cupid bow and then two like here where the turn up on the cupid bow exists. I've added the final line in just to create that sense of a smile or a lip parting with some black floss and that is pretty much it. I'm just fiddling around and making sure it sits how I want it to sit and that is my pharaoh finished. final touch for me is just going to be to tighten up this chin area because it's kind of like pointing a little bit further down than I want it so a nice tight stitch here is just going to bring it in at this point you could even add a beard if you wanted to for me I wanted to keep him sort of king tut baby looking um, and yeah it's pretty much perfect really happy with how this one turned out so if you have enjoyed this video, please, please, please do not forget to like, subscribe, comment. It's helping this channel grow so much, you wouldn't believe. And it also pushes me on to make more content. Let me know what you want to see. Go and follow me on Instagram. I'm that embroidery girl. I'm sure lots of you know that. And uh, yeah, I look forward to seeing you in the next video.